Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Diane. And we are Car Zombies. Previously, I fixed the brakes on the right wheel. Now I'm going to fix it on the left wheel. I started by removing the wheel bolts. Only this time we used the wheel alignment pen. It helped hold the wheel down while Di took out the bolts. Pull off the wheel. And the wheel stuck to the hub, so it was harder for Paul to pull off the wheel. When it came off, it fell straight down to the ground and startled me. It's supposed to hang on that wheel alignment pin. Paul didn't tell me the wheel alignment pin needed to be screwed in. Oops. Yeah. I got the caliber cleaned right away and removed the pin holding the brake pads without a hit. Boy, you're getting fast this time. I'm not so scared of being near the car. No, me neither. Can you just hold it with your thumb? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could push it in or anything, but... There you go. Voila! You can just pull it out. Yeah! This time I did my prying first. All right, take, remove the brake pad. All right. It's good, we're doing this with the old rotor. Did you notice when I press one, the other side goes over? Here we go. It would only work if you use two pry bars at the same time. Well, let's say you got them both right. I wonder if they float back out. Here, I think I got it. Okay. Let's see. Can I put this one in? Yeah. Perfect. Next, I remove the caliper bolts, starting by trying to break the bolt the wrong direction. Then I tried the wrong direction. I think it's just coming off the bolt, not turning. It is definitely going, you have to pull up, right? Wait, we were pulling up last time, weren't we? No, we want to go down. I need my wire. What do you need? The wire to hang the caliper. You are smart. I'm going to change the order of that. Tie your wire first. You don't want to try to break your bar to break it first? Well, no. all right. I knew if I used the end of the handle, I could get the best leverage. Oh, that was easy. Did I get it? Just oh, got it. You got it? I got it. Oh. Uh oh. Are you okay to hang it yourself? Yep. Look at you. Wow. Hey, look at these split kid. When you said you wanted to do this yourself, I would I was thinking it would be a lot tougher. You're doing an awesome job, woman. Thanks. It's like the second one's a lot easier than the first one, huh? Yeah. A lot easier. Did you know what's gonna happen? <laughs> one skinny the, thing? Yeah, the long skinny thing. And turn it all the way. Yeah. And put one lug nut in just a little bit just to hold that, keep the rotor from falling off is all we're doing. Aren't we supposed to take off the screw first? Oh yeah, good thinking woman. You get that screw off, I'll try to find the sledgehammer because I, I don't see it anymore. I need the tool for that. Oh, it's behind you. Oh, there, it got loose right away. <laughs> there you go. That I'll, helps. I'll let the emergency brake back off, all right? All right, thank you. The left. Here it is, I got it. It was on the doormats. They're made to keep your feet from tracking in mud. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> then we started hammering at the rotor and hammering and hammering. We're showing every hammer hit because in the two videos I found, the one pro hit the rotor with a regular hammer once and the other didn't even show hitting it with a hammer. The rotor just came off. I'll let the man do it. And then I tried hammering. That doesn't affect the alignment of the wheel? Apparently not. And my car has almost no rust. Imagine if it was outside for 20 years. I hit the rotor really hard. Eventually it came off. There you go. Yay. I saw it pop. Yep, it did. Things started going fast again. I cleaned the rust off the hub 
put on the anti-seize, then I put the wheel alignment pin in to help me guide the rotor in. And you need to put Loctite on. I think it needs more, go ahead. Oh, let me put the emergency brake back on for that. Okay. Is that helping? Is it oh, straight? yeah. That's it. You got to click. That was it? We'll see how it works. How it goes on. Finally, I got to put the caliper in. I know, I'm trying to find the bolts way up here, though. It's okay. up higher. There we go. That's right. That makes more sense. All right. Oh, you just got my hair. You're dirty. Oh, uh, time for you to take a shower, then. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Great. Start the other one. Okay, the other one is right here. Down here. All right, now get your head out of there. <laughs> it make me feel so safer. You might have to shift it up or down. You want me to look for, see what it oh, looks there like? there it is, okay. You feel it? Yeah, I got it. You gotta have to tighten it with Newton meters. Oh, that's right. That's off. Okay. Um, oh, here it is. I had already brought it over. Let me just double check it's set to 655. Oh, it went clockwise. It's going counterclockwise. It's no. clicking. And oh, clockwise it's, 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 to tighten. Yeah, tighten. yeah, it is working right. Yeah. And finally, I got smart about which direction the ratchet goes. Almost. Ah. I'll do that. All right, why don't I do the tightening of those, all right? I did it. Okay. We're getting to be experts at that yeah. torque wrench now. These are pretty nice torque wrenches. They are, they're really nice. Who are those? These are a... Um, I really like them. Lexi Vaughn. I really like them. They work great. They do still work. We're not yep. going to open the calipers anymore, so I'm going to put the lid oh. back on the okay. brake fluid. The brake paste is on the back side. The part that touches the rotor is the good side. That goes perfect. Back side, that goes away from the rotor. Other side goes towards the rotor. That's great. Push it. Oh, that's good. You got it. Would you, you hit your hand? <laughs> My finger was caught here and here, and it got caught somehow. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. You got it. Okay. It's neat. I can't wait to do mine, and then you yeah. get to help, and not, and I have, to, and you get to watch while I do the work. It's actually more fun when you do it yourself. Yeah. You're doing the work, yeah. Yeah, it's more I know. Fun. I keep wanting to jump in and help, but I can't. All right. So pump it once down, and then hold it. You're pumping it. Oh, I see them moving in. God. First time. Oh. Wow. I had some practice on the last one. Paul put the wheel on and I tightened the wheel bolts with the ratchet. A little bit more. Then we lowered the car off the jacks. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so I'm gonna step off. I'm not gonna make sure it impales me or anything, so I'll step off to the side. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> there we go. All right, just freeze and hold it. Don't get in front of it. Just let it go at that slope. Look at how perfect you're doing it. Should I loosen it more? Yeah, slowly. That was the best yet. So that's kind of the trick is as soon as it starts moving, just let the weight push its way through. Yeah. Voila. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> wow. Thank you. We're getting better at jacking. Yes. We're getting better at everything. Your brakes are, are these clean? They're clean. <laughs> They're brand new. I was going to say, they look pretty clean, but you know, we had some dirty gloves think, on this project. Well, I wanted really clean and tight, these grip really well. Yeah. So I wanted something that gripped really well because this scares me always. <laughs> it is a little scary, but now you're back down. So we'll remove the wheel chocks. You be in the car or out of the car? I'll be out of the car. I'd like you to test it, but is everything closed in the front? 
the brake fluid. Did you yeah, close that? Yeah, I closed it before I closed okay, the, good. the hood. Yeah, we're good there. So, so when do we tighten the wheel bolts? Oh, now, actually, before we start driving it. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, let me go double check my notes and see if we're at the testing phase. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good, good call there, Smarty. My man, or he calls me Smarty and my dad calls me Smarty. <laughs> <laughs> Your man. <laughs> It comes out occasionally, doesn't it? Yes. All right, so. Not because I'm smart, it's because I'm always a wise person. <laughs> How do I'm I always smarty do? again. You are. Everything's still set, so I'm going to stand where you are. You're going to stand on the right of me. That's all right. And you stand on the right of me, smarty. Oh, you're just happy as a clam, aren't you? I'm so you excited. You fixed your brakes. I did. You? All right. So Di, we gotta now tighten your wheel bolts to 120 Newton meters. Okay. This one that you just used is the one we bought, only goes up to 108 Newton meters. So we don't have a tool that will do what we need to do. So what happens in this house when that happens? You buy a new tool. Just one this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought, not because of this project, but one of the next projects, I knew we were gonna need a, a higher end torque wrench. So here's a really big one. And it goes from 33 to 338 Newton meters. Whoa. 25 to 250 foot pounds. Nobody knows what any of that means, but I know that means this will work on your wheel bolts. It's, it's within the range. Well, if I can lift a car, maybe I can tighten those bolts. We're gonna find out. <laughs> it sets, resets it every time? Yeah, every time you go ratchet a little bit, it resets. Was that the click of the thing or was that the click of the tire? It sounds like tire? a click of a tire, but I'm not positive. Uh, ratchet back a little bit. Now, listen, Claire, carefully. It sounds like the car. Kind of did to me, too. It sounds like the wire, like the car's moving. Let's do this. Let's chalk the wheelie we're working on. Okay. Since we're on the ground now, we could move the chocks. It was easier after we chalked the wheels. That was the click you wanted. Yeah, that's it. Okay, there you go. Yeah, the chocks help a lot, don't they? They do. You got them all. Way to go, I did. kid. They're all of them? All, all right. right. Yeah. I thought I did. All right, so you want me to drive, you said? Yeah. Should I, should right. I be outside just in case something happens? Um. I don't think I that. want to hear noises, so why don't you go out and let me see if I hear any noises back here. You probably will. Yeah, but I just want to make, I just want to hear it. All right. Hop in, let's take a ride. All right. I think they're fine. They, I hear a little bit of scraping, but that's what we, we have to we, expect. Yeah, I think we expected that because the. I feel that they're working really well, though. Oh, I don't God. feel any risk at all. You got your seatbelt on? Yes, I do. Oh, you're fast. I didn't have mine on. That was badness. Let's take a ride around the block. And that should do it for us. Some kind of spike riding behind me. But he your brakes work. But he doesn't know if that's my <laughs> brakes for the first time. Okay, Di, let's wrap this up. It's been a couple of weeks since we changed the brakes because we had a couple of trips we had to do right away. Uh, what do you think? Well, we've taken two 500 mile trips and there's been no noise, no squealing, no scraping. They sound really good. I agree. And, and they look like they're wearing really evenly. I mean, all of that primer is off where the brake pads rub and it looks really good. Okay, let's take a look at the brake pads, all right? I just all want right. to analyze it just a hair. All right, so these are the first two we took off. This was the outside, this was the inside. This has no friction material on it, and of course it scratched the rotor directly. This has a little bit of friction material on it, let me measure. It has a little over an eighth of an inch. The other brake pads were both had friction material on them. 
This I measured already is a little less than an eighth of an inch and this is almost three sixteenths of an inch. So when we're changing the oil every other time or so, it's a service A they call it, we should take off the wheel and double check. If we see it getting down to about three sixteenths, we may be too late for this brake pad. Okay. But, but maybe if it's a little over three sixteenths, we know we need to, to change the brake pads again, okay? So now let's look at the rotors. Your rotor that we changed the first time, as you can see, has some real deep grooves on it. It's definitely been destroyed. And if you look at the other side, it's pretty much clean still. No grooves, no nothing. Just as you would expect, it's, there's friction material here, none here. Mm -hmm. And of course, this other rotor, it looks pretty good on both sides. I gotta say though, I've noticed that your car doesn't shimmy when we brake anymore. So one of these rotors might have been a little bit lopsided or uneven. Mm -hmm. So we did fix that as well. Oh, that's great. Okay, let's talk about tools, all right? All right. All right, so we had some tool mishaps and problems. The first one was we were missing a breaker bar, so I went out and bought it. That was pretty easy to do. And now it works with our socket set, so we're good. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, I think we were missing a torque wrench. We were missing two torque wrenches. Okay. I bought a torque wrench for this job, but it turns out it only worked on the caliper boat. When you buy a torque wrench, make sure it hits the whole span of all the bolts you're going to use on the project. Because you have that little tiny rotor lock butt nut, and that required a tiny torque wrench. And you had your wheel bolts, which required a large torque wrench. So yes. fortunately, we were able to solve all three problems, uh, getting the breaker bar and the torque wrenches to work. So what else? The brake pad spreader. Right, the brake pad spreader. It didn't work. We couldn't figure out how to get it to work. I mean, I'm sure it works for a lot of brake pads on a lot of cars. It just didn't work on your car. But because it didn't work, we had to go. To, we had to stop for the night. The next morning, we went to Home Depot and we bought pry bars. Yeah, but make sure you do it on the old rotors, not the new ones. <laughs> yeah, but the pry bars worked really well. Yes, they did. Yeah. They or were put, great. Or put some cardboard between the rotor and the pry bar or something, just so you don't scratch up your new rotors. <laughs> <laughs> What about your measuring tool? Oh yeah, this little tool I got it in my pocket. We were just using it. it. It's great for any woodworking shop or metal shop. I mean, the the every time you need to measure the depth of something, you can just set it once, and it really holds on to it well, so that you can then double check it later on. Um, pretty cheap. I think it was around fifteen bucks on Amazon. I'll link to it in the info. Okay. It was definitely a useful tool. Oh yeah. Let's talk about other things that happened. So far, the pros I think did pretty good. You changed your brakes and it worked the first time. We didn't have any problems stopping or skidding or anything like that. And the parking brake works fine as well. The pros didn't tell us how to do the parking brake, but we no. figured it out. Yeah, well, that wasn't really necessary, well, was let's, it? Yeah, let's talk about that. So then the things that didn't go so well was like the parking brakes. I convinced absolutely that we never even should have spent a minute on those parking brakes. Yeah. If your parking brakes were rubbing on the rotor, then how could we have driven at all? I mean, that means it's on. Mm -hmm. And if it's not on and it's not rubbing the rotor, then why we should have just hit it with the hammer hard enough every time from now on. I'm going to hit it till the rotor is shaking loose first. Mm -hmm. And then I might consider the parking brakes. So the two pros who said to look at it, I think it just didn't apply to us at all. Mm -hmm. Also, getting the rotors off was really hard. Oh my gosh. When we went back and reviewed the videos, one of the videos just pulled the rotor off. Oh, isn't that easy? <laughs> <laughs> one, the yeah. other video, the guy took like a regular carpenter hammer and hit it once. Ping, okay, it's off. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what the Haynes manual said, but I, I don't think it had a lot about hitting it with a sledgehammer. So as far as I'm concerned, these guys should have told us, you might have to hammer and hammer and hammer at it because until it was hit, enough times it did not pop off okay and here's another one for us okay. the wheel alignment pin we didn't know how to use it we didn't even know to use it at first the pros didn't show them take well one had it on a hijack and just pulled the wheel off like it was nothing but mm -hmm. it's much harder than that and and the wheel alignment pin is a real help i will use it from now on when i take a tire off or take a tire on and you always want to have it at 12 o'clock when you use it if it's down on the bottom you'll never get a wheel bolt in those wheels are really heavy <laughs> oh my gosh i didn't realize that you know when no, we changed either. that flat a year ago it was just a little tiny spare tire wheel that thing was light it went right on it was no big deal but these wheels that you have are very heavy the brand new ones we got extra wide <laughs> they look nice but yeah, they are heavy nice. they're nice wheels <laughs> Oh, well, let's talk about sockets, too. All right. <laughs> I noticed that there's something that you learn. You learn a lot about ratchets. Let's see, sockets, what were all the things you learned? Ratchets, sockets, sockets 
And torque wrenches. And breaker bars. And breaker bars, yes. Yeah, and uh, how to flip the, the ratchet to go one way or the other, how to turn the ratchet, the, the socket without the ratchet, turn the socket with the ratchet, hold the socket while you're socketing. Oh yes. my gosh, there were so many things and you had to learn every one of them. Yes, it was <laughs> awkward at first, but I got the hang of it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think you enjoy it now because at the end, we're doing the other wheel, you were like, it's like, yes. it's like watching a YouTube video. <laughs> oh, it is like watching a YouTube video. <laughs> and let's see, what else was there? Loctite. Oh yeah, Loctite. We didn't know it was a super glue. So we're thinking, oh, it's creating some, you know, making it a little bit more friction or something like that. But we were like, how come I can't get this bolt in? How come I can't get it back out? It just screwed in easily a few seconds ago. So Loctite is a super glue. <laughs> Anything else? The brake fluid level. It said if we started with the fluid level at max and then we spread the brake, brake pads and it was at max and then we changed the rotors, it was at max and at the end it was at max, nothing changed. Yeah, no matter what we did, it always said max. Yeah. So, is there anything else? Not that I can think of. What's next? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, we got three easy fixes. You're gonna fix your cup holder, you're gonna fix that bracket that pushes the seat back and forth, and you're gonna fix the speaker grill. This is the kind of project you should have started with as your first project on your own car. Brake pads and rotors, that's a little up there. That's like a class A project. Way to go. Thank you. Well, please hit subscribe to watch that and click thumbs up if you liked us. And thanks for watching. Thanks, bye guys. Bye. <laughs> So we're going to torque to 120 nanometers. I got Newton? some. No, yeah, Newton. <laughs> Dang it.